Hello and welcome to another New Blue Captivate tutorial. I'm Ian Stark for New Blue, and in this two part tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how you can integrate Zoom directly into your Captivate projects. In part one, we'll look at setting up a simple meeting or webinar, and in part two, we'll take a deeper dive into some more advanced topics. Let's cut right to the chase. Native Zoom meetings are not particularly attractive. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that they're a bit dull, not very inspiring, and rather boring to look at. New Blue Captivate's conferencing features help us to ditch the Zoom grid and replace it with fantastic looking, fully customizable, animated graphics that communicate well and integrate with other production elements. And it does so with a set of tools that make all of this a piece of cake to pull off. Let's create a new production right now and see how easy it is to incorporate a Zoom event into a project. I'm going to simulate a panel discussion with two speakers displayed at the same time. I'll use the trusty Diametric collection from the Captivate Graphics Library and I'll start by bringing in a simple background, a couple of picture-in-picture -picture frames, a chat box and, just for fun, a poll graphic. When I play them on, of course, they'll all be using the default preset values, but we'll soon be changing that. OK, that's roughly what we want our viewers to see. Let's now set up the Zoom event. We do that from the conferencing menu, and for simplicity, I'm going to use an existing meeting rather than creating a new one, which saves me the hassle of sending invites to attendees and so on, but the process is still the same. It's very straightforward. I just type in the Zoom meeting ID and enter a password if there is one. We'll talk about authenticating your Zoom account in part two. There are several workflow options available to customise your Zoom event. Firstly, you can decide if you want to receive audio and video from meeting participants. In this case, we do because we want some of them to take part in the panel discussion. And they'll see a courtesy pop-up message telling them that the event is being recorded. Next, you can choose to send your Captivate program output back into Zoom. Simply put, that means that participants in the meeting will be able to see your gorgeous production as you intended it to be seen, not as a bland Zoom grid. And the final workflow option, Open Zoom Monitor, gives you a handy overview of your Zoom workplace, which means that you don't have to keep jumping out to the Zoom interface to control your event. When I click Join Zoom Meeting, you'll notice that two items have appeared in the project panel, People and Zoom Monitor. Let's take a look at the People tab in the Properties panel. All the participants in the Zoom meeting are listed here, and the first thing I want to do is to assign participants to speaker roles. I want to have two panellists appearing at any one time in this presentation, and I create them by clicking on New Additional Speaker. Now I'll assign Alan to Speaker 1 and Will to Speaker 2. And take a look at the picture-in-picture -picture frames. They've immediately updated with the assigned participants. Could it be any easier? Well, actually, for this part of the tutorial, I've already prepped the graphics so they do this automatically, but in part two, I'll show you how easy it is to do that. You can open the People Controller in a separate browser window, which is handy if you want somebody else to manage participants. You can also do that on a mobile device using a handy QR code. Now, if I want to replace Alan with a different panellist, I can do that really simply with just a couple of clicks, either on my mobile device or in a browser window or directly from within Captivate. In a busy production with a large number of participants, that kind of flexibility really does make a difference. Let's quickly get that chat up and running. And to do that, I need to connect the chat graphic to the chat controller. It's that simple. Now I can easily curate the displayed comments by playing them on and off in the chat tab. And just like the people tab, I can open the chat tab in a separate browser window or on a mobile device. Again, that's helpful if you want a second person to curate the questions. If you've already seen our shots layout tutorial, you'll know how incredibly powerful shots are when it comes to playing on multiple elements simultaneously. Well, you can take full advantage of shots with conferencing features. Here's a project I've already set up with two shots where the speaker changes and the poll graphic is replaced with a video. Note how it's only the items that have changed which animate on and off, making for a much smoother, more professional presentation. And finally, remember we chose to send our Captivate program output back into Zoom so all participants can see the finished, polished program? Well, this is what it looks like. 
and if the meeting host selects Spotlight for Everyone, we can make it the main video everyone sees on their screen. Now, you might want to stream your output to a wider audience on YouTube Live or Facebook Live or any RTMP service. And of course, that's completely doable within Captivate, as is recording the output. We're going to cover streaming and recording in depth in a future tutorial, so for now, just be aware that you can. And we'll also be covering how you can achieve much the same results using Teams instead of Zoom. So be sure to subscribe to the channel to find out when new tutorials are released. So there you have it. Powerful and tight integration between Zoom and New Blue Captivate. Ditch the grid, people. Ditch the grid. I'm Ian Stark for New Blue. Thanks for watching.